But from a Muslim, from my point of view, I believe Allah Ta'ala knew what was best for insan and he sent down every single thing that is needed for a wholesome, decent society and that will remain until the day of Qiyamah. Because when he said, Al-Yawm Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum, he said he's completed Deen. For me, that means there's nothing more that needs to get added. It's complete. And then the Prophet ﷺ, through his hadith, we come to understand that the Khairul Qurun, the first <coughs> era of the Prophet ﷺ, his life, the Sahaba Tabi'in thereafter, the kind of the, the, the great or, and the, the, the ones after that as well. So the Prophet ﷺ, of course, Sahaba Tabi'in and the Tabu'a Tabi'in thereafter. We refer to this as the Khairul Qurun, the best of all eras. So we believe that anything which of goodness will come, definitely you'll find it within the examples of this. Why is it important to mention this? And I'm saying this from the outset to kind of put, you can say a statement there. So we have this yaqeen. Because nowadays the illness is, Muslims, we don't understand our deen. So then we look for outside things to validate what we do. It's like because we've got this inferiority complex. Because at this moment in time, the world's nazar is on Islam. And then sometimes people will come very challenging to say, is this part of your religion? Do you do this? Do you believe in this? Do you advocate, promote, and advise this? And when we don't know how and have don't have an answer, we become quite inferiority complex, defensive. I'm here to say this much, right? This is what I believe. If it proves to be right via science or anything else, I'm all for it. If it goes against it now, and apparently you think you've got one over me, I'm still going to stay firm on this because my belief is, and this is not dogmatic, I have full yaqeen in this, that Allah Ta'ala didn't send down any silly rules. Okay, Allah Ta'ala didn't send down silly things. Because if you look at how, for example, everything makes rational sense. So when he says do something, if I can't physically prove that at this very moment in time, it doesn't mean I'm going to reject it because the Toms and Jones of society say that it's not compatible with what I believe. Okay, lakum deenukum wa deen. Everything which I believe up until now, if it can be proven, all and good. And if it can't be, I guarantee a time will come where everything will become clear because it came from that source, which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knew what was best for each and every one of us. Well, actually, it, probably every, there's not a single member in the country where Mawlana, Alim, Scholar, Imam, Sheikh, whoever you want to call him, has not mentioned the fadail and the virtues of fasting. Would you all agree? Was that a fair statement to say? Yeah. Up and down the country, across the globe, you'll find every member, an alim has spoken about the virtue of fasting. And in that, I guarantee he said, fast on Mondays and Thursdays, it's the sunnah. People were thinking, yaar, these maulvis, bruv, they're just saying the same thing again and again. They, Na'uzubillah, some people look down upon it. Go, hey, gallani, maulvi, ani, bas, that's all maulvis talk about. It took... And forgive me, and I'm, I'm, I'm half English, so I can say this because he's half my brother, right? But he's a half English guy, right? I'm not English, I'm half English. The fully, like, full white guy came on GMTV. Was it GMTV or some show in the morning? And he promoted intermittent fasting. And he said, oh, Muhammad did this, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he wrote a book about intermittent fasting. And look at the, what Muslims did at that point in time. We, we didn't need next man from Cambridge, Oxford and to, to, to validate our deen for us. The fact that it came from Allah, Allah's Rasul, khalas, that's for, sufficient for me. I don't need anything extra from an academic of the world to tell me that, oh, your religion's all right. Oh, yeah, you know what, your, your deen's all right. So then I feel, oh, mashallah, now I'm accepted. I don't... <laughs> Listen, it took a guy to come on national TV to say... Muslims were told this so many, uh, the Muhammad said this 1400 years ago, Muslims went all out, bruv, Allahu Akbar, Islam is haq, Allahu Akbar. 1400 years, Maulavis were screaming that from the member. you didn't pull up your sleeves then. It took a, a white English guy to come on TV who studied with a degree to tell you that your religion, an aspect of it was alright and now you feel decent about it. I'm sorry to say that may sound a bit, uh, you know, crude to some people. But that's reality because we've got an inferiority complex. So let's take this out of our minds. Why? Because some people may be sitting here with a lens of a liberal idea, a secular idea, and so on. I'm here to challenge any view in the world. I say Islam promotes the most wholesome, decent way of living and being. And that's my belief. And that's why I've chosen to be a Muslim. I've chosen to be a Muslim.